What happened to the Las Vegas real estate market for May 2020? Well, that's what I'm talking about today. I'm starting right now. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Angela O'Hare, your favorite Las Vegas realtor. And welcome to my June issue of my monthly market update for Southern Nevada. And in this issue, I'm gonna be discussing May 2020 numbers. We knew that um, the numbers for April and May were gonna be a lot lower compared to last year due to the coronavirus. However, things are picking up. I'm telling you, I have been slammed these last few weeks. Every day I've been going out showing houses. I had a listing that was on the market for six days. So it is getting a little crazy, a little busy right now. So I'm gonna go over the numbers and discuss what each of this means and how it may reflect for the future sales, future real estate market for Las Vegas. So there were 1,702 listings that sold for the month of May, which is down 13.6% from April and down 48.1% from May 2019. Yeah, 1,700 sales in a month is low, but it's not in uncharted territory. Um, I think January 2019, we did roughly around 1,800 sales. So 1,700 for May 2020 compared to January 2019's 1,800 is really not that bad. And the medium sales price of previously owned single family homes, which always compromises the bulk of the market, which I always just talk about, I don't talk about condos, went from 310,000 in April to 315,000 in May, which is up 1.6% and also up 5% from the prior year. We started our medium sales price in 2020 at 313,000. We actually dropped to 305,000 by the end of January. Then when it came to March, we hit 319,000, which was an all time high. And by April, we were down to 310,000, as I just mentioned, which is still higher than we were for February and a tad down for the year. May actually proved to be a winning month when it came to medium sales price, going from 310,000 to 315,000. And what does that mean? Okay, can you guys figure that out? It means that we have very little inventory. So this is a typical supply and demand issue. We have a lot of buyers out there, but we have very few homes on the market. So any home that is uh, moving ready, that's nice, is only on the market for a few days and it's getting multiple offers. So if I were a seller, now is a wonderful time to sell. I'm telling you, like I said in the beginning of the video, I had a listing in Desert Shores that was only on the market for six days. We sold it at asking price, which I priced it according to market value. I'm not that type of agent that will overprice a home. I price it accordingly um, so it can sell fast and for the true value of the home. So it's important to know that if you are a seller, I am not kidding you, now is the time to sell, okay? Seriously, it is crazy out there, <laughs> very crazy. So buyers left the market for a month or two, but they are back now and they're coming back with a force. I have three deals under contract for July so far and June's not even over. I could possibly end up having six closings for the month of July just because of how busy it is and how many buyers want to buy right now. A lot of these buyers are out-of-state buyers. Um, a lot of them are relocating to Las Vegas because of their job and they're not affected by the whole casino industry. And the good news is, is that we are finally open back up. We are not open back to the capacity that we have been in the past. However, we will get there. Las Vegas, I don't think we're gonna take a big crash like everyone anticipates. Everyone thinks that it's gonna be 2008 all over again. I just don't see it happening. I mean, we could possibly get a lot more foreclosures coming up because those people that took the forbearance route may not be able to pay their mortgage or make the forbearance difference. I don't know if you guys know the difference between what a forbearance is or deferring your mortgage payment, but a forbearance is not a good thing to do. Basically what it is is that you are 
really at the end of the three months, say like say for three months, you want to not make your mortgage payments and you're going into forbearance on your mortgage. Well, what that means is at the end of that forbearance period, you are stuck paying those three months of mortgage. And then on top of still the mortgage that you have coming ahead, or you can be put on a payment plan for those three months, which I think is lousy because these banks definitely receive government funds. So I think it's lousy that the banks or the lenders have done this to the American people. I was going to go on a forbearance, but then I really investigated and no, I just, no, I made my mortgage payments. Um, I made sure I made my mortgage payments. Now, if you were able to defer your payments and put them on the back end, that is much better because who really stays in their home for 30 years? Not a lot of people stay in their home for 30 years. So it's just going to be an extra value added to the end. And that was a better option. I wish a lot of banks let their clients do that. But unfortunately they did not. They did the forbearance route and they're going to get money. Anyway, they already got money from the government. So now they're going to penalize you for missing your mortgage payments. Anyway, that's enough about that. So I have a feeling that in the next six months, we may see a lot of foreclosures. Um, a lot of people who weren't able to afford their mortgage payments during the coronavirus um, will not still not be able to afford their mortgage payment because when Maybe they're not back, back in work. Maybe they're not working full time just yet. And maybe the coronavirus will come back again with the force, especially with all these riots happening. You just never know. Anyway, let's get back to the numbers. Meanwhile, the tally of new listings actually jumped, but we are still far below last year's levels. For May, we had 3,231 new listings, which is up 28.4% from April but down 29.7% from the prior year. Again, buyers are here. Clearly we have buyers going on right now, but there are fewer homes, okay? Sellers, did I mention? You need to sell if you're thinking about selling. Now is the time to sell, especially if you went in the forbearance period. Now another food for thought is your seller, you went into forbearance and you now want to sell and then buy a new home. That's not going to happen. You need to make sure that you take care of your forbearance. You pay up whatever fees, whatever payments you're missing on. Then you can sell and buy new. I had a client, um, out of state client that wanted to buy. However, he wouldn't get approved for a loan because he was still on his forbearance for his mortgage. So it's very important that you take care of that forbearance first, sell your house and then buy a new one. If that's the route you want to go. There was also um, a total number of 5,799 homes listed without offers in the month of May, which is um, down 4% from April and down 26% from the prior year. And our housing supply jumped up to 3.4 months of housing supply. We were at the 2.1 level for, for a long time, but now we are now at 3.4 months of housing supply which is up 11.1% from April and at 42.2% from the prior year. Six months of housing supply is considered a neutral market. Anything over six months is considered a buyer's market and anything under six months is considered a seller's market. So we're still technically in a seller's market right now. And 66.4% of the closings was on the market in May for 30 days or less. In April, this number was 69.5%, and in May 2019, 55.1% of the homes were on the market for 30 days or less. What I'm seeing is that homes that are updated, move and ready, clean, are actually selling a lot faster, and homes that have been on the market um, either have become stale, or they were overpriced, or they just weren't moving ready. I have been, however, been able to get all the three transactions or the two buyers that are closing next month. Um, one of them, I was able to negotiate 10,000 in price and then have the seller pay 8,500 in their closing costs. And the second deal, um, it was already priced accordingly. It was priced right, but I was able to get the seller to pay 4,500 in closing costs. So that's the important thing to consider when you're buying a home. One, you need an agent that knows how to negotiate and knows how to negotiate at the right time. Um, especially if you really like the house and you don't want to lose the house, there's certain factors that we look. When we make an offer, what I do is I look at see what's been selling 
in that neighborhood first, and then I look around in that neighborhood to do to run comps of that home. So once I run the comps, then I says how long that home's been on the market. Sometimes even if the home's been on the market for a couple of days, I may still try to get the seller to pay for the closing costs because it, it just depends on how desperate the seller is or willing to sell their home or how much they want to sell their home. Um, there's just certain factors that I look at when we make offers on a home. And a lot of people think that the market's going to crash and it may crash, but right now this summer, I don't see it happening at all. We are coming back with full force and I can't wait to go over the numbers in July um, or actually August because of how busy I am in June. So it's usually a month cycle out. So I can't wait to see what July numbers look like in August. That'd be very interesting to see. You know, the Las Vegas area lost more than 200,000 jobs in March and April, which is pretty crazy. Putting um, the unemployment rate at a jaw dropping 33.5%, which is up 4% from April of last year. And I've noticed things are picking up. Restaurants are opening. Um, stores are opening back up. It's pretty crazy to wait in those long lines after they've been closed. It looks like America is buying. People are out there buying. It's crazy how much people are buying. <laughs> For June numbers, we expect a rebound and I think July will be even be better and maybe even August. People either relocating here um, because of job transfers or because they're retiring here. This is a great place to retire to. We're ranked, uh, I think, in the top 10 places to retire. We have at least 22 retirement communities here in Southern Nevada. And I've been doing a lot of videos on all the retirement communities. But if you're thinking about relocating to Vegas, now's a good time to relocate. If you're thinking about selling, now's a great time to sell. As I mentioned throughout this video, the reasons why it's a great time to sell. One, if the market does crash, why not take advantage of the higher prices? And two, you may get multiple offers, increasing your sales price. And three, I don't know what three is, <laughs> but now is a great time to sell. Um, no one knows what's gonna happen to the market across the country, across the nation, no one knows. We can only go off what's happening now in the present time. You know, a lot of people are hoping that it crashes to the 2008 and I honestly don't see it happening. It can. I don't think it's going to be as drastic if it does, but I don't, I don't think it will at all. These numbers do not lie. I base everything off of facts and the facts are what I just went over, all those numbers. I hope this has helped and shed some light as how the Las Vegas real estate market ended for May 2020. Um, I will also post a link down in the description below for the Las Vegas Realtor um, numbers, the, the report. Um, if you are thinking about buying or selling here in the Las Vegas Valley, you can always give me a call at 702-370-5112 or I posted a buyer seller form link down in the description below. Leave a comment what you think is happening to the Las Vegas real estate market. Be positive, I'm tired of reading negative people um, I'm, I'm a positive person and I don't need people leaving negative comments down. Okay. Really? I mean, why do people have to be so ugly? <laughs> I'm not an ugly person. I'm not a Karen. No, just kidding. Um, but let's be positive people. This is like, we only live once and we don't need to be so negative about things. So this realtor doesn't know what she's talking about. And, um, she's not, she doesn't know anything about real estate. She's blind or whatever comments I get. It's just ridiculous. You know, if you don't like it, then don't watch the video, right? Uh, I'm Angela O'Hare, a Las Vegas realtor. And if you like this video, be sure to hit the thumbs up button, leave a comment down below, share with a friend, and come on, subscribe to my channel. Because I talk about a lot of things Las Vegas related, obviously real estate, and a lot of neighborhood communities, all about the communities, that's what I'm about. Anyways, thank you so much for watching today, and I can't wait to see you guys on the next one.